In this video, we'll be learning about biological molecules. So we'll cover the four main types of biological molecules, what monomers and polymers are, and then also how condensation and hydrolysis reactions work. Let's start by looking at the four main types of biological molecules. These are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Now, these molecules are all classed as organic, which just means that they contain carbon. But one of the special things about carbon is that it can form four covalent bonds, either with other carbon atoms or with different elements. These bonds can be either single bonds or double bonds, giving carbon the flexibility to form a wide variety of complex structures. And if we zoom in on this molecule a bit, it's also worth noting that all these bonds are really strong as well because of these shared electrons that exist between the atoms. These four main types of biological molecule also include other elements as well. For instance, they all contain not only carbon, but also hydrogen and oxygen as well. It's important to note here though, that carbohydrates only contain carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, but that lipids, proteins and nucleic acids can contain other extra elements too. For example, proteins always contain at least some nitrogen, whilst nucleic acids always have both nitrogen and phosphorus as well. Next, let's talk about what monomers and polymers are. Monomers are small basic units that can join together to form larger structures. For example, in carbohydrates, we call the monomers monosaccharides, and these are just simple sugars, so things like glucose. In proteins though, the monomers are called amino acids, and then for nucleic acids, the monomers are called nucleotides. Polymers, on the other hand, are large molecules made up of many repeating monomer subunits, all linked together. For carbohydrates, the polymers are called polysaccharides, and a good example here is glycogen which is made up of loads of glucose monomers, all bonded together. For proteins, the polymers are called polypeptides, and these are formed from a huge number of amino acid monomers all bonded together again. And then finally, for nucleic acids, the polymers are called polynucleotides. And an example here is DNA, where each strand of DNA is a very long chain of nucleotide monomers. Polymerization then, is the process where monomers join to form polymers. And this is how we create the large, complex molecules that are so essential for life. Now, you might be wondering at this point why we haven't mentioned lipids. And that's because while lipids are made up of subunits, like glycerol and fatty acids, they're not made up of repeating units. And so they don't technically fit the definition of a polymer. Finally then, let's look at how condensation and hydrolysis reactions work with these molecules. Starting with condensation reactions, this is how most polymers are synthesized. And remember, synthesized is just another word for being made. In a condensation reaction, water is removed in order to form a chemical bond between molecules. During the process, a hydroxyl group from one molecule and a hydrogen from another are both removed which joins the two molecules together and releases a molecule of water. This all requires energy though, which is supplied by a molecule called ATP. A good example of a condensation reaction is when amino acids join together in order to form a polypeptide. This releases one molecule of water for every additional amino acid that joins that polypeptide chain. On the flip side then, in hydrolysis reactions, Polymers, or other large molecules like lipids, are broken down into their subunits. In this case, water is being used to break a chemical bond between molecules, and it's the splitting of water that provides the H and OH groups needed to separate the molecule back into its subunits. And these reactions release energy as a result of this process. A common example of this is taking a polypeptide and using a hydrolysis reaction to break it back down into amino acids. 
If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.